Listen, I have to just tell the audience one thing okay. before you start. All right. Is that okay? All right. Okay. So we're in a historic building here for those watching in Guatemala. We're in a historic building here in Toronto. It was built like 1912, would you say? Yeah, you? it's over 100 years old. Yeah, when he was like born. That. So Sandra, here's what throws me <laughs> off. Here's what throws me off is that I, c I come here at 12 noon, so Hugh says, be here 12 sharp, and I find out there is an old-fashioned elevator that is a guy that basically just winds a piece of thread to get you up to the sixth floor, and he's on lunch. So I got to climb up six flights of stairs, and I realized that Hugh, yeah. not only do you do interviews, you do complimentary stress tests. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Couldn't that be part of your comedy show? Or maybe not if it's going to the U.S. Maybe not. <laughs> this is starting to seem like a 12-step uh, a program or a setup for a workshop on ADD, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, this is the kind of what not to do. You know, you seem very fit. I'm surprised you were struggling to go upstairs. Yeah, stairs. I'll let you know the secret, Sandra. I was joking. I was joking. I am very, very fit. Now, Eden, let's get to know you a little bit. Are you from Toronto, by <laughs> the way? I thought we are getting to know each other. You know that Jews exaggerate very much now. So <laughs> We like to exaggerate. <laughs> what does that mean? So you just called yourself a Jew and an exaggerator. And, and, and Jewish people, it only takes us about a minute and 30 to identify the fact that we're Jewish in an interview. And I, I think I, I broke that by, what, 30 seconds? <laughs> this time? I don't know. I think we went over. I went over. <laughs> I we went over we like, we, But we, you were very fit, you. We, thank you. Thank you. Can we put that on underneath my name, Chris? Well, listen, I know you got a lot going on, Eden. You got a, do, uh, do. a comedy special? That's going to be aired uh, across uh, the U.S. at least. Uh, across America. Uh, coming up. Um, and, um, and it's, you know, I know we, we already had a conversation about that. And uh, I know it's not just uh, all fun and games because there's, uh, there's a motivational aspect to it as well. It's actually the story of something that happened to you. And you, I mean, it's a real life story. It's not all fun and games. You went through some serious stuff. And it's it's definitely to... not all fun and games this yeah. time. This time, my career has definitely been all about fun and games for uh, a long time. Uh, I'm not going to say it because I'm a lot older than I look. But uh, this time, you're right. It was very serious business. I, I found myself going through, I guess, like an early midlife crisis um, about yeah a few years ago now, almost few, yeah almost two years ago, and uh, it happened early. Did, have you been through one of those, Sandra? You, let's hope you don't go through because it's not. I'm having one right called, now. That might be called actually menopause for women. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So I haven't hit that yet, but I'll let you know. Okay. Let me know. <laughs> it's if not anything, that far from me. Let me know if you start getting some hot flashes in the next ten minutes. Okay. okay? I will. I just, will. Just don't be shy. If you just see me getting red and I look like this Christmas tree lighting up, then then you'll know. Don't be shy, okay. Sandra, at all, all right. because we're we're all family now. Yes. Okay. That's the other <laughs> thing about being Jewish, is that. It only takes us, if it takes us a minute and a half to identify that we are Jewish, it only takes us 10 minutes to be extended family. So what I'm saying to you, Hugh, and I'll answer your question in a minute. I didn't forget about your question. <laughs> what I'm saying is that you'll be, you'll be invited to my son's bris. <laughs> Anyways, listen. So when Can I my unborn knife? son... <laughs> <laughs> which I plan on having a son. I, from what I hear from the sperm bank, I'm still in pretty good shape. <laughs> Jeez, uh, Chris, I'm, now I'm mentioning sperm banks, and he's tried to ask me a question. This is out of control, Eden. This got really, I'm, Are you depositing? <laughs> 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 this is a question that begs to be answered. Where did, where did this go wrong? We were talking about my midlife crisis, and somehow we got to... You know, sperm banks and then this is what happens depositing at that <laughs> and then depositing and I withdrawing and I do I tend to do more withdrawing to be perfectly honest with you. But anyway, getting back to <laughs> <laughs> anyways, listen. And so I say to the nurse, look at you might want to think about separating the neurotic, depressed Jews with the psychotic killers. Because I don't think we're going to make good roommates. I don't think we're going to get along. And so she looks at me and says, this douchebag looks at me and says, 
Well, everybody here is treated equally until psychiatric assessment is done. <laughs> and I'm thinking, equal, wait a minute. So let me get this straight. We've raped, maimed, and pillaged the native Indians, okay, to a point where we've swiftly obliterated anything remotely resembling an authentic Canadian culture. And I'm clubbing their tusses onto little pieces of toxic swampland that is barely inhabitable by your average six-foot crocodile, and leaving them to drink tap water that's some kind of bio-organic cocktail of E. coli and Cyptococcus and Legionnaire's disease. We've marginalized and racial profiled the black community to a point where they're in some smoldering cesspool of complete and utter racism where your average black kid can't even walk across the street at midnight with a hoodie worrying about the fact that he might become open target practice for some police officer with an itchy trigger finger in a dirty hairy complex. <laughs> But inside your local psychiatric ward, it's equal opportunity. <laughs> so the next morning, the nurse comes in and she says, A few years ago, um, on a serious note, that uh, I lost some dear friends. Um, my, you know, somebody who was like a father figure to me, a hero. Uh, I loved him very, very much, and then I lost another very, very close friend just a month later. Uh, I then broke up with my, ended a long-term relationship. Uh, we spoke about that. That can do it alone. It certainly can. And then I ended a long-term relationship with my girlfriend who I, you know, I cared about very much. I was going to say the l l I feel like the Fonz. I couldn't the quite word. say it. Yeah. I who that. I cared for very much. And it was just, you know, one of those times, Hugh, that, you know, you just get, it was like, you know, just vroom, vroom, and then just the knockout punch. And... Um, it was a very traumatic time, uh, and it was also a time of great epiphany. Um, you know, in, in Jewish consciousness, we believe with all of our hearts that a crisis, not, and this is what I go around talking to people about now because I do some motivational speaking now, and I'm very happy to do that, and I tell people that a crisis always leads to a rebirth. It's a law of nature. It's an irrefutable law of nature, and it's something we as humans have to cling to. We have to know it, because when you're in the heart of the storm, my God, it's hard to see, you know, the forest through the tree. Well, I mean, we, we often get caught in a, in a very warped and delusional definition of success, as you know through your careers, that one has to be very careful that you don't define yourself by society standards, your family, your friends, and your parents are the ones, Sandra, you know, that usually have the biggest, they exert such a tremendous influence over us. Mm -hmm. And that's tough. I don't know if you, if you can relate to that. Like your, you know, your parents are just, they loom so large. And sometimes they have expectations that uh, you just, uh, that it may not be you, right? And then you got to deal with all the fallout of that, right? And the fi family dynamics well, and that sort of thing. Yeah, well, it's really tough because in, you know, in the, the arts here in Canada, as you know, uh, and in comedy, um, you can be achieving, you could be attaining and accomplishing great creative achievement. Accolades, you're doing television, you're doing radio, you're being written about in the newspaper, and you're, and you're still not earning a tremendous livelihood. So it's very confusing for those, for your... The per for the artist and for the family as well. Right. Yeah, this is Canada, right? Where everyone has to keep their day job if they are lucky enough to have one. But it's, but it's a little confusing when Ouch. you... Ouch. Yeah. But then again, we don't have to worry. We, I mean, we're not looking at a possible Trump as president. My <laughs> gosh. Well... Actually, did um, you see? Oh, sorry, I don't mean to not make this about yeah, you anymore. Sure, but let's yeah, just sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really, how did you land her as a guest on the show? She... <laughs> she I mean, how many agents did you have to speak to? Uh, go through 15 agents you to know, get to Sandro. <laughs> Anyways, listen. So. Um, I, I, I'm really enjoying this interview with Eden, so let's just, uh, if you don't have to rush away, Eden. Sure. I don't know when our next guest is going to hear, be here, but if you, if maybe, Mary, if you could just let us know, and then we'll, we'll know when to wrap it up. Otherwise, we'll just keep talking to Eden. 
actually, Eden, uh, that, and that brings me to another question. I want to get back to your other uh, big insight uh, yeah. that you took away from your experience there, and that was that um, that you wanted to put God first, in a sense. And, mm-hmm. and, and what strikes me, and I'm always following the synchronicities here, is our previous guest, Happy Happy, he told the story of how he came out of jail as a criminal with a really bad attitude, and he had an epiphany, and basically God came into his life and changed his whole outlook for the rest of his whole life. And I'd like you to talk about that. I think it's a really, I'm, a, I'm really appreciative that you, that you brought that up, because I'm finding now that in 2016, I and mean, you've interviewed a lot of guests here, God is becoming a dirty word. <coughs> it really is. It really is, Sandra. Like, I mean, it's, we have to be so politically correct. And so I do speak about God very, very openly when I'm doing motivational speaking because I'll tell you right now that, you know, without surrendering to God during that difficult period a few years ago, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have gotten anywhere. I wouldn't have been able to break through the wall. Mm-hmm. So the question is, how did I do that? But what, what was that? What, what does that mean, surrendering to God? Well, what it means is, you know, there's certain points in our life, and the two of you probably know this because you've probably been there a few times. You, there's certain times when your back's against the wall. You're backed into a corner. So I say to people when I'm, when I'm doing one-on-one coaching and when I'm doing lecturing, I say, what's the only thing to do when you're backed into a corner. Seriously, look at it physically. Look at it emotionally. Sandra, what do you do when you're backed into a corner? You put your hands up. There's nothing you can do. You put your hands up. If someone's got Mm -hmm. a gun to Mm -hmm. you and you're backed into the corner. Mm -hmm. So you put your hands up and that's all God desires from you is that you put your hands up and surrender it to him. So that's what I did eventually. I said, I can't do this. It's just too much for me. It's too, it's too much for me to handle. So I said, I'm putting my hands up and I'm giving the reins back to you. So what, Eden, what's the difference for you between God and self? The difference between God and self? Yes. Well, that sounds very... Uh, new age Yeah, very new age. And, <laughs> and I'm... I'm uh, Actually, it's consciousness. It's okay. Listen, this is why I wanted to get her in on this. I know she's got her unique perspective. Yeah, but here's and she the thing. She teaches courses, and please respond. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: is that do you, you probably are a fan of the secret, right? The law of attraction. No. You're not. No, no, no. I well, think the why secret not? is a fraud. Okay, but why don't you believe? I'm now talking about the idea of your thoughts manifesting things. I'm not talking about the marketing of the of the DVD. Right. Right. I'm talking about the idea of your, your thoughts creating things. You don't agree with that? No. Why not? No, it's actually not. That You're talking about you create your own reality. And um, so really it's not the thoughts. It's not positive thinking. That's not accurate. It's really the emotions that create. It, the thoughts visualize, the emotions physicalize. So that's why the secret is, uh, it, it, that's only half of the equation. If they really, if, if you gave the other half, it, that's why they don't, they don't talk about the other half because that doesn't sell. But the what, wi- think positive is easy. Just think positive and you'll manifest. I don't know anybody but wait a minute. who's the done way you, that. Right, but wait a minute, Sandra. That. The way you think, the way you configure your thoughts, you don't think that has a direct manifestation on your emotions? It absolutely does, but people don't understand the connection. For example, for example, listen to this. Okay. I was... My twin brother, Ron, are on at 15 years old, okay? Yes. And for 25 years, um, I went around thinking that I, thinking, thinking that I was abandoned. That I was abandoned. I thought to myself, this was the story that I told myself. So I thought I was abandoned. Okay. Okay? That thought created a tremendous emotion inside myself. Lots of emotions. Anger, resentment, bitterness. Then, cut to 25 years later, I'm in the hospital. I'm having this crisis. I'm, I'm, I'm down. I'm vulnerable. I'm broken. And now I start to, I, I, I look up to God. I say, God, I surrender. Show me the truth of my life. And I see that it, what my story wasn't correct. It wasn't, I wasn't abandoned. 
and I reconfigure my thinking to understand that I was liberated, I think about the whole thing totally different, and I feel totally different that's about exa- it. That's my point. When you talked, when you said, I thought this and then I felt this, it's the actual feeling that actually creates the reality. It's not the thinking. But the thought was first. But when somebody says, when first. you say, think positive, Eden, okay, the reason you even have to think a positive thought is because you're feeling but negative. that's an oversimplification because... It's not. No, it's an oversimplification, it's an oversimplification because... because to say, think positive. No, no, no. What, that's what I'm saying. When pe- people say think positive, it sounds so easy. But I'm talking to you about a fundamental paradigm shift in how your, pro- your brain is processing an event. Can I ask a question? We even have someone in the you. audience <clears throat> acknowledging what I'm saying. And, and, and so, how do you know she's acknowledging sec. what you're saying? <laughs> she, 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 so she's a judge. She's on to, wh- to what I'm saying. Vote, whoever she votes for wins. No, because this, wait a okay, minute. Okay, okay, and then we Sandra, get voted off the island. <laughs> Sandra, Sandra, I'm all for, for a thoughtful debate. And, and I'm, a, I'm more for a feeling debate. Okay, well, wait, we can I do ask the ask feeling question. after the show. That's, that's Eden, let me ask you a question. And to, to, to kind of tie, because what I'm asking is, so you're saying, what you're saying is that you surrendered. That was, and that's what you're advocating in a my sense. My whole life I was trying to do it on my own. Right, okay, okay. Sydney. Now Sandra, I just want to ask you the same question. Now do you think, look, Eden was up against the wall, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Do you, have you, I mean in, in those similar circumstances, what would you advocate? Would you advocate a surrender to God, I, I, the I, universe? I, I absolutely surrender, but I surrender to self because self is God. See, this is becoming very semantic. And this is the problem with... Well, that's what, well no, that's what I'm no, asking. No, no, the no, reason no, I ask I, you, it, the difference between God and self is because I'm trying to find out what that means right, for you. Right, but right. Trying this, to find out what, yeah, where that yeah, fits And in. I understand what you're saying, but this is where we've now stumbled onto a, a wonderful revelation. Here on Liquid Lunch, it all happens right here. This is where society has went wrong. And if you... If you want a microcosm of where society has went wrong, you don't only have to listen to the last seven and a half minutes. We're in a total semantic argument saying the exact same thing. Well, it's not we, got, we got every religion. You know that, right? Well, I'm listening. Uh, what you're saying you is that you guys are both saying the same thing. Do you agree? But you're arguing with well, well, each other. I want other. to be right, and she wants to be right, yeah. and the egos are entering into it. Seriously, Hugh, it's like I, I have to admit, my ego is starting to rise a bit. Sandra, if she's honest, would say her ego is rising just a little bit because we're human beings. I want to walk out of here feeling that I was right because it's, that's my nature. Sandra would like to argue her position effectively and cogently, and we're saying pretty much the exact same thing. I agree with you fundamentally, Sandra, because God and self are so intricately linked. You have a spark of God in you. The only difference for me is, and I don't know if you agree with this, is that, is that I believe God is, has the final say. And you don't have, if you want to say the universe. No, that's, no, that's a If you want to say the universe, a lot of people want to say the universe, I'm okay with that. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, if, if there's a sick man, you know, and my twin brother who would go around and pray for sick people, and one man was on the verge of passing away, and he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, no matter how much heart he gave of himself, he couldn't save the man from mm-hmm. passing away. Mm-hmm. The universe has the last say. And that's why I don't like the secret, because they make it seem like, you know, if something negative happens, that there's an emotional block, and that, you know, you didn't manifest it. So I say to you, the universe, and I say God, is, is, is an entity in power that is beyond us, even though a spark of it lives in you. Can you and go along with that? A hundred, a hundred percent. And when I, I, the word God for me means grand order design. It's just really creation. It's not for me. I don't, it's not even about ego for me. I don't care if you're right because there's no right or wrong. All this is, all this this what you call arguing is just defining who we are so in that argument in that um, debate we get to determine who we are through understanding who we're not so that's that's the whole point of the argument so I think it's actually healthy to be able to do that because For I sure. define who I am through this conversation and you do the same it doesn't matter if we're too yeah. di- if we if our definitions are different doesn't matter that's irrelevant it still expands us so I might learn something in the way you interpret something that 
adds on to who I am, or I might say, you know what, that doesn't re resonate with me, but that still adds on to who I am. Exactly, and, and from what Sandra said, I just want to tell you what I learned in the last, because I have been listening attentively, evidence to the contrary, I have been listening to Sandra, and she spoke about self, and that's a, a wonderfully powerful concept, because um, when you say self, Sandra, I interpret that as soul, a soul. Yes, okay? yes I would because agree with that. Because the soul is all knowing. Yes. The soul comes into this world knowing everything. Okay? And when we leave our bodies one day, I believe we will re enter that point of all knowing. Right now, we're pretty much blind. So, Sandra makes a tremendous point when she talks about getting in touch with self. Because to me, you're saying, Can reconnect with your soul with the knowledge that is there buried beneath your insecurities, your fears, your bitterness, your anger, and reconnect with your, your true soul. And I think to your point, thank you, Eden, I think to your point when we say, you know, you're surrendering, your back's up against the wall and you're putting your hands up and you're surrendering to God, you're really just surrendering to what is. Right, you're just surrendering to whatever is in this moment and whatever that will be is whatever. So that means somebody shoots me and I die? then I surrender to it. If that means they walk away and I, I live, I surrender to it. So you're just surrendering to what is in that moment. Right? And that's how I pers that's how you can actualize and that's the, the verb behind surrendering to God. Because when you say I surrender to God, what does that mean? Well, you're surrendering to that moment and whatever the outcome will be, I have no attachment to it. It's another wonderful way to describe it. It's another wonderful way to describe it. And like I said, it's very interesting to me and if somebody played back the last 10 minutes now, they would see that we really are on the same side. Mm -hmm. and Sandra and I are really trying to, to elucidate and trying to articulate something that is very, very similar. But our, I would say in the first few minutes, our egos were, were showing their face a little bit. And I think this is... But the, they served because they brought us to this point. Right. But, right. but we've come full circle in the sense where I certainly can see that you are expanding on what I'm trying to say. And I think you see the same. Yes. And, yes. and it, so it's like in, in Jewish consciousness, we, the first thing they tell us when we're, we're young is they say, find a study partner. Find mm -hmm. a study partner. Where I know in the Christian world, they, you will, do, they will often do like, you know, church meetings, right? Bible, Bible, Bible study, study. Bible, Bible study. Bible study is a big thing. But what we do and what we're big on is, is finding a, a study partner. We call it a chavrusa. And just like Sandra and I are doing, like I would call Sandra and I would say, you know, let's get together and put our two minds together because we believe when two minds are in synergy and can focus, something really, really magical happens like you saw here today. Well, you triangulate, right? You're bringing those two different perspectives and everybody mm -hmm. learns from the other. Yeah, okay. triangulate. Does that mean you come to a point and create a third from the two? On top of your head. <laughs> Know what I'm saying? Yes. Eden, this has been a great conversation. Um, we got good. We, we, listen, we were off to a rocky we went, start. We went but everywhere. We ended, <laughs> but we ended on a good note. And so um, let's, just, uh, let's just talk about, you got Eden TV coming up. Just, just give us the coordinates, the URLs that we need to know about. Okay, so uh, EdenTV.ca, we're getting ready to launch that in March. That's E-D-E-N. Oh, you're spelling it wrong. Yeah, I just, uh, my mom put an eye there, but uh, that would just mess up everybody on that would. every <laughs> continent around the world. So we decided to go with Eden, E-D-E-N-T-V.ca. And this is a really, really big thing in my career now because I'm, I'm branching off from the normal irreverent humor that you've come to know and love, Hugh, and I know that you have. And I'm now branching into more inspirational, motivational content, which makes me, um, it makes me feel great because... You know, that's always what I wanted to do. Making people laugh is, is, is a wonderful thing, but um, now it's about lifting people up, inspiring them, and trying to give them clarity and wisdom. That's what it's about now for me. Uh, it's a, that's so exciting. It is very, very exciting. All right, Eden, this has been great. I'd love to have you back anytime. We can carry on this conversation. I'd like to, Maybe yeah, where something. we left off. Thank you so much. So we're going to take just a little break here. Liquid Lunch is going to continue. Cindy Straddling is in the house. So, uh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Free frame. I want a picture of this. <laughs>